As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. think they're going to be quiet. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. And to Louisiana, where right now we're about 90 miles north of New Orleans. And we're on a big cattle operation. On today's program, we're going to be visiting with two brothers at Two Brothers Whitetails, where we're going to be telling you how a deer farming operation and a cattle farm can work hand in hand. That's if these guys will be quiet long enough. Come on guys, would y'all be quiet? I'm Trey Bollinger with Two Brothers Whitetails and we're here in LaRanja, Louisiana. Our property is about 90 miles north of New Orleans. We have hardwood bottoms, rolling hills, a lot of farm terrain here, soybeans, corn, and uh, really open terrain. This ranch existed primarily for a cattle operation and uh, with the large, a large acreage, we've been able to also add deer and it's actually worked really nice together. The deer and the cattle have complemented one another and it's created just a beautiful world here. I love visiting deer farms. I love meeting new people and getting to be friends with them. And there's not a deer farm or one that I've gone out and spent time with that I just don't just love being with. These are good people. These are good guys. Two brothers working together and they have fun. They're serious and they kid around. And I mean, hey, deer farming is something that the white-tailed deer has brought people together from all different walks of life. It doesn't matter how old you are, what color you are, or, or what profession you're in. If you love white-tailed deer, the odds are we're going to all get along. And so uh, I love going to places like this, Two Brothers Whitetails, because, well, it's the family farm. You see the family together, two brothers working together, and you know that the white-tailed deer, I mean, the white-tailed deer is the reason that, well, we're all together. The deer farming industry is very fortunate to be able to have a registry. And what I mean by that, very much like the American Kennel Club, is called NADAR, the North American Deer Registry, and where we have tens of thousands of records of the lineage of different animals, and it's thanks to the North American Deer Registry. Thank you. 
All right, Raymond is from Oklahoma and says, Dear Keith, you've been to some of the best deer farms and ranches in the country, and I'm wondering if you offer advice or consulting. Reason why is I have tons of questions on better managing my family's hunting ranch and need some honest advice. Any suggestions? Raymond, all you need to do is shoot me an email. I am a consultant. I'll wind up coming out to different people's places and help them, whether they've got a deer farm or a, or a uh, game preserve. I'll wind up coming out and helping. So if you want some information or anybody else wants to uh, speak to me about consulting, just send me an email and I will get right back with you. Raymond, thanks for the question. Long gone are the days of being able to keep accurate, detailed information on a notepad when you're a farmer, whether you're a farmer for cows or whether you're a farmer for deer, and that's the reason why deer farmers, everything comes down to data and predictability, and that's the reason why as a deer farmer we use a computer program called Game Management Systems. Okay, so uh, I always like to start out a deer farm asking people to take me to their three-year-old pen, and uh, so that's what we've got in here, three-year-olds? Yes, sir. These are some three-year-olds, and these guys, we're not gonna be breeding with these, but other farms, have, as people come make tours, they're picking these guys out, and they're putting them in there and uh, enhancing their operation, breeder bucks, whatever whatever the needs are on their farm. So okay, we're using so, this pen for that. But I'm looking at these guys and go, in, in, like in Louisiana, these are huge deer. I mean, Louisiana folks, it may be the sportsman's paradise, but uh, the one thing is, they really haven't had big deer here until deer farming really has taken over. Yes, sir. And with deer right. farming taken over, what has happened is that it's brought in a brand new bunch of great genetics. And, and although it takes nutrition, age, and genetics to make big deer, it really takes genetics. I right. mean, you've got to have it. And so these guys right here, you take a look at them. I mean, there's some, these are giant deer for Louisiana. And to give you an idea of how good the program is here at Two Brothers is that these aren't really going to make the cut, the That's breeder right. deer here. Right, correct. Okay, so what you've got here is these deer, guys could come out that want to get in the deer farming business. They can they right. can call for a tour, and we'll give you a telephone number here in a minute so you can call and book a tour. But they can come out, if you get in the deer farming business, you can buy a deer, you know, call Trey or call Brandon and, and buy one of these deer, use them as, as a breeder buck, or people that have a high fence uh, pasture, right. okay, will wind up buying these as what we call pasture deer or right. stalker deer, correct? Right. Yes, correct, correct. And, and we're seeing a lot of that in Louisiana and really seeing the bar lifted on people's, you know, pastures and what's going on because of these types of bucks entering their breeding program. If you go back and you take a look historically at what Louisiana has produced, uh, big buck wise, it, it's really pathetic when you start yeah. looking at it in comparison to Iowa or, or Texas or Kansas. Or That's where some, everybody leaves. Yeah, and, and they don't hunt. come here to hunt right. because the size of the deer hasn't been here, but, it, but it's right. here now. And what has happened is people have taken their piece of property and they've fenced off the land. They said, you know what? They're gonna bring an influx of new genetics in to be able to create you know, create a, a deer farming mecca. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, a beautiful place yeah. with great genetics. And so that's what's happening all over Louisiana right now. And it's due to guys like Brandon and Trey that be able to create this opportunity for people, landowners, to be able to put these deer on your place and use them as breeding stock, whether it is in a deer breeding program mm -hmm. or whether it is a pasture deer. These are some nice deer. And how yeah. old are they? These are three-year-olds. My goodness, okay. All right, so the three-year-olds, you got a good look at them, folks. And I mean, there's some real nice ones. But uh, right now, I want you to take me to two-year-old pen. All right, yes, sir. Okay. In order to grow big deer, we need to reduce the stress on them. And in order to reduce stress, we can have misting systems. Deer Guardian misting systems have been a sponsor of ours for many, many years. And what that does, it puts insecticide in a mist out across the pens, which just kills the insects. And George Tunall is a personal friend of mine. He's the owner of Deer Guardian. He has come up with a brand new misting system. I want to show it to you now. They're always looking out for innovations. And if you take a look at this, George has come out with a home run. What this is right here, it's a nice piece of rotten hose, and they've strategically placed a hole in it right here, so the pressure that is emitted from here creates the perfect amount of mist. And this mist, well, it's the latest in technology from Deer Guardian Misting Systems. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, Newport Labs, the North American Deer Registry, Beam Fence Company, 
shock effect. GMS. Deer Guardian Misting Systems. Record Rack Deer Feeds. T3 Whitetails. And Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. This is a lane that they run the deer back and forth to the deer barn and then back up into their pens. You know, one of the questions that I'm often asked is where do deer come from that are on a deer farm? How does a deer farmer, a new deer farmer, obtain his deer? Well, the first thing to do is you deal with other deer farmers. And as you look at the different deer farmers available out there, there are hundreds of them, depending upon what market you live in. And the reason why a deer farmer picks who they want to get their stock from is, is not just because they have big deer, but because the people stand behind their deer maybe, or because the maybe they like the way their deer look, or maybe they like the customer service somebody provides. But there's a lot of real big, well-known deer farms that have got great deer, but there's also some sleeper deer farms that have got some great deer, and I think these deer right here that the Bollingers have found, they came from one of those sleeper deer farms in Texas. All right. And we just showed you what some three-year-olds look like here in Louisiana at Two Brothers Whitetails. And what we're gonna do now is uh, tell them how old these guys are. These guys are two. <laughs> and I want you to take a look. These are monster two-year-old bucks. And then when you start thinking about these early in Louisiana folks, I mean, I'm taking a look right across the board and I don't know of one of them. I, don't, I mean, not one of them is a slouch, literally. I mean, yeah, by, by any stretch of the imagination, you can take a look at these guys and you can tell that these are really, really quality deer. But there's, there's something special about these deer that, that uh, most deer farmers probably taking a look at them will not be aware of. But I want, I want Trey to tell you really what's special about these guys. Well, we realize after breeding a couple years that when you get those early birthdays from the AI program, then those bucks get a real jump start. And it really produces, you know, much more mature deer. And you're able to really see the caliber of that deer as he progresses through the years. Mm -hmm. So these are live bred. And live bred means they could have been born, you know, way, way late, August, even into September. And that, that affects their growth. So this pen is live bred bucks, which uh, are offspring from live breeds. And, and they're really good to be live bred. We're moving into, we lap AI close to 100 does last year. And that's where we're going in the future. So you can see that in the yearlings, but uh, that's the deal. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, as you look across here, uh, AI, folks, stands for artificial insemination. It's real important that in the deer industry, industry, that's what we call it, AI. Okay, and LAP AI is a artificial insemination through laparoscopic means. They, they surgically impregnate these deer. And that's what they have moved to now. When we talk about the age of these deer and how important it is uh, to maybe to get a deer born early, the reason why when you take, start thinking about it, some fawns are born as early as May and others are maybe not born until September. Okay, keep that in mind. You advance 12 months, okay? In 12 months, that deer that was born on the fifth month compared to the ninth month, that deer on the fifth month has got four months or he's got a, basically a third of his life ahead of uh, growth wise ahead right. of that guy born in September. Right. And it takes when a guy is born late, when a deer is born late, it takes a while for them to catch up. And by two, they're starting to catch up, but by three, they really will catch up. Well, as a farmer, whether you're growing tomatoes or watermelon, right. or it doesn't matter what you're growing or deer, we want them to get big in a hurry. And so artificial insemination allows us to be able to adjust the birthing dates, to be able to get them on the ground early, get them big early. And so these guys right here, although they're monster two-year-olds, I mean, there's some of them that are, I mean, anybody in the country would love they to have They were bred on this farm. Yeah, but, uh, every one of them was bred and born yeah, right here, yeah. okay? Although these are great genetics, and you look at them right now, and they're great big, the one-year-olds that you've got, I'm sure, yeah. are gonna smoke these guys when they hit two. Half of those are AI, and then the I tagged 125 that were in our AI program that are fawns this year. So next time you come back, it's gonna get more interesting. This is incredible. Look at these two-year-old folks. Two-year-olds are unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, right now, I want you to show me the one-year-olds, because that's really where I see this all going. The younger the deer, the better the genetics, the better the quality. So let's go yes, to the one-year-olds. 
Now it's time for the Beam Fence Minute. As a landowner, one of the things that a lot of guys have problems with is having a fence that's properly spliced together. I'm Mark Beam from Beam Fence Company. Let me show you how we splice wire together. Over the years, we've tried different ways of splicing wire together. We found out that the Nyko press crimp works the best for us. It's a little bit it's stronger and it's also longer, so you only have to crimp down once versus the smaller crimps where you have to add more and more together. With this type of crimping system, one crimp does it all. People want to have a fence that's going to last a long time. This is one of the tools that we use to make sure that that happens. If you'd like to find out more about constructing the fence, go to our website at beamfence.com. This is the one-year-old pen down here, and, and I want you to see it has a, a little carport, kind of a shed with a free choice feeder in here. And the reason why I'm putting the shed over it is because they get a lot of moisture here, a lot more compared to say Texas where I'm from. And this just keeps the feed nice and dry. You want to keep your feed dry as a deer farmer. All right, what we've got here is this protein feeder has spouts coming off of it. And what this allows the deer to come up, stick his nose in here and get feed out. Okay, he's got a little tray down here. And if the food falls down here on the ground, they're gonna be able to eat it right out of the tray. But folks, what you're looking at here, Trey, get on over here. What you're looking at here, what we're fixing <clears throat> to show you, these are some spectacular one-year-old bucks. Tell them about them. You've got about 45 in this group and uh, we're expecting great results out of this group. You'll see a lot, real typical. Mm -hmm. We're really happy, really framey, really typical, some solid one-year-olds. And these guys ought to really blow up it too. Now these guys are three quarters Texas as well so you know when you see these big one-year-olds a lot of times it takes northern genetics to get those big one-year-olds but we're seeing i mean 160s and 170s and some really tall tine bucks and we've had them even as big as 200 inches you know with texas genetics so we're we're happy with it and it's getting better and better okay look, take a look across here and i want to i want to address something we as, as deer farmers uh, we find that different strains of deer different kinds of deer do better in different environments and in this environment here it seems like southern genetics and especially Texas genetics are very hardy and they have done very well here. These are bottom in Texas bucks and another thing to know about these bucks is a, there are some breeders that say you know what I'm only buying five deer so I don't want to buy your three and four year old breeders that's a big old buck and yeah I'm just not ready for that and I say hey look get one of these one year olds and he can cover five does and he may blow up be the biggest thing on my ranch so so guys that can come to a farm tour and pick out of this pen and uh it's some people economically this is a better deal for them to set to buy younger bucks so these mm -hmm. guys are not off limits i will sell out of this pen and we've got about seven to ten of these sold and guys are going to breed with them this year okay and that's one thing that i will tell you that's different about dealing with trey and brandon is that most deer breeders i know will not sell a yearling buck because they're everybody wants to hold on to them yeah. and, and everybody thinks they may blow up to be the next giant in the industry be. and they very well may bred the way these guys are bred but if if uh, people are interested in buying uh, bucks or does or fawns from you give them a telephone number so they can okay. call uh 985-969-6083 and that you can get a hold of me directly. You can look online at Two Brothers Whitetails. If you Google it, it's gonna pop up. You know, you'll be able to see us there as well and see some video footage and pedigrees of our bucks and stuff, so. And folks, give Trey a call because coming to a deer farm, I know the white-tailed deer, folks. I know this sounds corny, but the white-tailed deer has changed my life, it's yeah. changed your life, it's Absolutely. changed every deer farmer's life I know. And I truly believe that if you love white-tailed deer, you come out to a deer farm and the white-tailed deer will change your life too. What do you think about that? Some things are taught, others are caught. I like that. All right, so everybody always wants to see the breeder bucks, and folks, that's what we're going to show you right now. So, Trey, tell us about them. Well, this is uh, Cash, Pablo II, and G3. And, of course, we've been breeding with these guys uh, for a couple years now. Uh, Cash is only three, so we're still trying to see his production. But we sold Pablo and G3, and they're going to be going to other farms, and uh, we're going to be keeping cash, and we're upgrading. But we're really happy with these bucks. These bucks are three quarters Texas, mm -hmm. and one of them is seven eighths, and uh, they've just been phenomenal. They've done phenomenal on our farm. I like all of them. I mean, I, I really do. And cash, I think uh, I look at cash and say, "That's cash money right there." <laughs> His mom's <laughs> name's Flo. Is she? Yeah, sure is. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. He's a he's a good looking deer, and and, and I I want y'all to take a look at the pen. Okay, this pen and other pens that are here have got tall grass in them. 
And now I know the reason for that. Okay, uh-huh. but the, I mean, a lot of guys, a lot of deer farmers, wind up taking mowers and get in here and, and, and cut and manicure their pens very nicely. But tell them the reason why you have chosen to leave the grass tall. It's for the same reason that I choose to do that in right. my pens. Well, you know, my dad, he doesn't really like the tall grass, but the deer like the tall grass. There you go. <laughs> our yearlings, you know, fawns that are, that are born, and all our deer, they get to lay in that, and mm-hmm. it creates a barrier. It's a barrier for insects. It's a barrier for, um, you know, colds to travel. And, you know, it's, it, just, it just creates an environment that's less stressful. And even though I love to see it all manicured, I think it's better for the wildlife to leave it. Well, these are beautiful bucks right here. Absolutely beautiful bucks. And if somebody wants more information, give them a telephone number. 985-969-6083. We specialize in wide Texas bucks. And folks, they got them too. Different businesses have different business strategies. And here at Two Brothers Whitetails, they've decided that they want to be a big fish in a small pond. And folks, it's working for them. If you'd like to contact Trey or Brandon Bollinger, We'll have their phone number coming up at the end of the show. Make sure and write it down and get a hold of them. We'll also have a direct link off of our website to their website. If you've got any questions or comments about the show in general, get a hold of me. Shoot me an email. I will get right back with you. I'm Keith Warren, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories.